couple of high school students I know went on a foreign mission trip about a year ago and came back home with hookworm. Now apparently they had picked it up walking barefoot on a beach that had contained contaminated soil. In fact, it is quite well known that our feet can be an environment or like a petri dish of all sorts of gross things. And so parents who've seen or caught a whiff of their kids' gym shoes while cleaning their room are probably shaking their heads right now in agreement. But can you imagine what the disciples' feet must have been like? Or maybe you don't, but um, it was in the readings today. Well, 12 grown men who lived in the Middle East and had to walk everywhere they went. Their feet might have been very rough, callous, dry. They definitely did not lotion up and definitely a bit smelly and dirty. Yet the Lord of Lords, the King, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, God himself, didn't seem to care about getting dirty or touching the disciples in their filth. He was willing to stoop down and wash their feet. In fact, everything about this Holy Thursday night speaks about this desire for Jesus to draw close to us in love, especially those places that seem most undesirable. And he does so without discrimination or worry about what is to happen next. Jesus' focus is on loving the disciples in the now. The disciples' feet, as well as ours, may in a way symbolically represent those places in our souls and in our lives that we don't want Jesus to see or think, of, think, or think that it's beneath himself to care about. Simon Peter's protest, he will never wash my feet, may be the same protest we may give to those areas in our lives that we are afraid to show Jesus or are too dirty that we think for him to touch. But that's precisely where Jesus wants to go. Because in the end, what Jesus shows us through the washing of the feet, through the gift of himself in the Eucharist, and through the establishment of the ministerial priesthood, all three of which we celebrate this evening, is this, is this, is how he wants to love us right now. Even in our filth, even in our sin, even in all our trials, Jesus wants us to know that his love is for us right now. And this love means going into the places where one makes ourselves vulnerable, where it isn't determined by how others will appreciate our gestures or not, may open us up to criticism or the possibility of being betrayed, getting ourselves a little dirty. If there's one message in Jesus' actions today, it is this. Love in the moment. Do not wait to think I will show my act of love later on, or when I feel like it, or when I am better. In loving in the moment, right here and right now, it prepares us to rise up to the task for whatever love may demand of us tomorrow. Jesus didn't allow what would happen that night to affect how he loved the disciples at the Last Supper. He didn't allow the thoughts of, one of them will deny me three times, or one of them is going to betray me, or all but one will abandon me, to stop him from loving them in the moment. Jesus wasn't petty. No, he truly loved them till the end. And these ways of loving him in the now prepared him to love in the greatest possible way later when he laid down his life for us and for our sins on the cross. You guys have probably heard of the miracle of the Hudson in 2009. Captain Sully of U.S. Airway Flight 1549 took off LaGuardia Airport and as he gained altitude over Manhattan, his plane ran into a flock of geese, killing his two engines in the plane. In a span of 180 seconds, Captain Sully had to decide what he was going to do, and he said it was like the eeriest sound in the world. A massive plane with 155 souls on board, and no sounds coming from the engine. 
He couldn't land on the airstrip, nor the highway, nor on top of the apartment building. And so he decided to land on the Hudson River, dead stick with no engines, gliding over the water, literally saving everybody on the plane. How? Was he lucky? No. With the grace of God, Captain Sully had spent and practiced the last 42 years of his life since he was at the age of 16, this same exact scenario, so that when the time came, he knew exactly what he was supposed to do. And that's the same thing with love. Jesus was faithful to showing love in the moment that he would rise to the ultimate act of love on the cross only the next day. And sometimes we think that great figures who do wondrous acts, oh, that was only a one-time act, not realizing that they had constantly and consistently been preparing with little acts day in and day out. Jesus displayed, even in the very last moments of Holy Thursday, loving acts of wanting to cleanse us of our sins by washing our feet, nourishing us with his body in the Eucharist, and giving us the ministerial priesthood so that his Father's love would be shown to people of all generations. So if you are at home right now, if some of you are going to wash the feet of your family members, kids, and spouse, do not let this day and what we celebrate be lost on us. Love in the moment. See this act as a call to forgive past faults and sins of those you love. See it as a moment not to recall the past hurts that they have done to you or will do in the future. But see in it in a way to lay down your life for them, to touch those places where it may be messy and dirty, so as to obey Jesus' command to love just as he loved by laying down our lives 